next day, it's 7.50 a.m. I've been working on this for a while. Um, I got the hard drive speed thing, kind of. It's 1.2 megs, which is okay. For 1990s, I'm sorry, I'm always tired. I stay up too late and I get up too early. I just have these weird issues with this drive. It's just not hanging on. It's a Quantum PD-210S 200 megabyte drive. So 200 megabytes is really going all over the place with the, with the head and the platter. And it's just making a lot of noise because it's got a far distance to travel for 200 megs. Not like today's drives are just barely blip for 200 megs at gigabit. Let's draw the beach ball because that's what everybody does. So that's a 25 megahertz FPU math beach ball. Probably take about 17 or 18 seconds. So 15 seconds, it's slightly faster than my 1200s FPU. Okay. So I'm going to fart around this for a while. Floppy drive's been floppy drive's been working okay I do notice that I have to kind of lift up on the disc a little bit to kind of push down on the head I have it on the maximum pressure and I don't think it's enough so I'll have to look at that I keep getting random read errors on every disc I know is good I'll test them on the other 3000 and they're fine I know my discs work good because they're always in a dry stored environment out of the light and safe and they work fine. I just, I just can't win in this Amiga world. Listen to this. Also, I got bad chip RAM somewhere. Amiga test kit started failing. I had all these weird glitches. But I had all these weird glitches where I was like, uh, uh, uh. so I'm like, I'm gonna run an extended test and just let that thing rip. Fast RAM, it ran for over an hour, no problem. Chip RAM. Round two, you gotta let it run a couple times because it's random, it's checkerboarding, so it doesn't always hit everything. Let it run two, three, four, five time loops, the 2.1, 2.2, or 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Let it go to like five point whatever. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's like the jelly of the month club. A little update, I removed both hard drives. I went to program myself some 3.2.1 ROMs for the 3000T. An hour later, I got two new ROMs in. Here's the original one whatever they say 37.175 so the 204 ROMs for the 3000 I marked them low and high low and high U180 181 just for reference it's 10:40 a.m. that hard drive blew up too it's 12:30 I got the Buddha SCSI IDE Buddha IDE thing in here that Kev sent back because it broke well guess what it don't work so I flashed the CPLD again, and the drive decided it's not going to read disks again because it's... So I hooked up a GoTech. Fine. And then the GoTech is like, oh, I have read errors in here. So it's randomly just screwing up. This drive was working until you power it off. Then the CPLD gets erased. So flash the CPLD. I have it on a disk. That disk won't read because it's got an error, so I unplugged it. So then I put a daisy chained, the Epson from Rusty, on top of it. And then it's just like a cascading nut farm. It's like the whole unit just decided, I'm gonna blow up again. I'm not do anything, not do anything. Like nothing, nothing works again. It's just like death. It's just dead, look. <laughs> just dead. Like what in the Sam hell happened? So I flash the CPLD again and I watched my own video on the Buddha that I did last time. I'm losing hair like you wouldn't believe. I already lost a lot of it. So I flashed it again. I copied the library, right? I'm gonna take install 3.2 out and I'm gonna reboot. I should get an actual workbench 3 1 whoa 4 that I did on this drive on that video, I found that drive and plugged it back in. And I got the IDE drive light hooked up. Now since it doesn't have SCSI, it takes a second and there we go. It's booting off its hard drive. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. 
that's failure. The dots you'll see, and then the crash. That's that's just perfect. Oh my God. Nope. CPLD's dead. It won't do nothing. Twelve forty-two p.m. Got it booting natively off of itself. Watch. I'm gonna reboot, and the screen's gonna freak out over and over and over again. See? Is it gonna actually? Nope. It just does this. This light goes solid, and it continually, whatever it's doing, constantly yellow light reset. I literally have to let this sit powered off for several minutes. If this initializes and the light goes out, then it'll work. Otherwise, it won't. There we go. Now the machine will boot. I don't know what the hell's wrong with it. Whatever. Look, DH0 is not formatted. So I got a chip RAM error here. DH0 is not it. So I have to reboot, but I can't reboot because I can't get the damn system bus to not constantly freak the hell out. Check these dots out. It's got freckles. Okay. See this? I know something's going to get screwed up when this starts happening. So expansion board diagnostics. There's the Buddha. It doesn't say it's a Buddha. I want to be able to reboot. This will be great for emergencies only. Bad hardware for good computers. Built-in speaker on the 3000T. It's up here. But look, oh, now, we're, now we're fine. That's great. Back in action. No freckles on the screen. Everything's groovy. It looks really nice. Minus the effed up coloring. Alright, so no Buddha in. And this thing's still doing that flashing screen of on, off, hell. I'm pulling the chip ram out of it. So, here we go. One mega chip ram. It'll just dynamically adjust itself. I want to see if everything kind of Stops freaking out. Do I have a reset bus? Can I reset without it? Yellow lighting. That's it. There we go. It's doing the double hard drive click. There's it go. Oh my god. Fuck this fucking Amiga. What the? I'm gonna get some food. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. I didn't get anything to eat because I'm a moron. I have a hunch. I think it's because I was in such a hurry to get this working. I didn't recap the board. <laughs> oh, it's midnight and I got the board recapped. So I'm going to bed so I can get four hours of sleep again. I'm exhausted. Running on coffee and and pure pain. Hello from the next day. Yeah, I'm in the same shirt. You know the rules. Not, I have not replaced the chip ram. I, so there is the board in. We're going to reinsert all the screws and then get the drive cage in. And just like that, it's back together. I replaced the small SCSI cable. This is, this is really the one that comes with it. It's a little bit long, so I've replaced this long SCSI cable with a single uh, rainbow ribbon. Tuck, fold, flip, inserted. Uh, Quantum Fireball 3.5, 1080 megabyte drive. Fan is currently unplugged. The only thing I have left to do is plug in the speaker and get some cords going. Okay, so we have view. Now, I have 8 million lights on. Let me shut this death overhead because it's making my display dim. Oh. There we go, much better. Okay, so without the 9,000 lumens of light, I can actually see my monitor. We're going to test 
PAL NTSC. This is PAL. See as it goes up. This is NTSC, or I think I hit it twice. Okay, that's PAL again. Single hit back to NTSC. Oh, that's uh, that's my bad. I'll adjust that. All right. All right. All right. I don't know what the hell that was. And that was a capacitor exploding. Well, that sucks. Now I have to take it all back apart. Should have left the showy in that spot. There we go. I'm going to look back on the footage and see if I can see that. Oh, I couldn't because it was on the side. Yeah, that, that sure did pop. There it is. Power decoupling capacitor. Blew its, shot its freaking load all over everything. Now I gotta clean everything up again. So, with that out of the way, you can see right here what's left of a cap. It was in the correct way and it happens. What model was that? Watch it be the one I don't have. 1647. Good, I got those in stock. Found a new way of removing these bad boys. Put my driver on here. Oh, so much nicer. Because these are long. Okay, carefully now. This guy right here, so it was just a defective cap. See the solder's clean, no damage. All right, let's get this mofo out. Okay, well, this time we just power it up like this before I go put in the drive tray and all the stink in. So here we are again. These decoupling caps blew. Hopefully that won't happen again. Here we go. that scares the crap out of you. Damn. Damn it. Same capacitor twice. Dry. So I just double checked my cell phone, Sprint Lail Viewer. C175 and 171. 1647 UF capacitors. Okay. Caps back in. Should be a negative 12 volt cap. I got the meter on it. This is all plastic so it doesn't hurt. Showy cap is in. What am I doing? Is this recording? Okay. Watching this to be about 11, 8 to 12. 11, 8, 3 and steady. 11, 8, 4. 11, 8, 5. It shouldn't go over 12. 11, 8, 6. There's my kickstart screen. Okay, is our voltage is correct? Nothing goofy is going on. Maybe it was a bad cap. I don't know. It's not hot. The other ones are not hot. Yeah, 171 is a decoupling capacitor for the tick line. It's gonna scare the crap out of me if it pops. That's why my hand is up. There's your boot. There's my display. I'm gonna hit amber. 31 kilohertz. There she is. I gotta adjust the screen. Turn it back to disabled. Turn it off. Nothing is it's hot. Turn it back on. 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Neighboring cap 83. That in Celsius is, I don't know, science, math, how do you get that? How do you get this? In? There we go. 28 degrees. 26.4 on the neighboring cap. The one that blows up is 24.3 Celsius centigrade C communist. I think we're good. All I do know is the Amiga's working again. 
which is freaking awesome. Minus blowing the sand cap twice. I think I'm going to go celebrate with some poultry products for lunch. Be back in a bit. It's uh, 12.45 p.m. It's like 2.30. I um, went and had some lunch. Burrito bowl from Chipotle. No chicken today. That's what Mona wanted, so that's what we got. Um, I'm going to again reinstall the drive tray. So here we are, working Amiga 3000T. She's so tall, I can barely fit her in the frame. We got her feet cleaned, we got her feet on. You can see how they're kind of bent up a little bit. And that's because this thing never boots off the correct drive. Let's be prep. Boot options, TF2 enable. Got to install 3, 2, 1, and all the goodies. It's a fresh hard drive. I want to give it a real test once it's done. Floppy drive still needs some kind of work. It's It works when it feels like it. New caps, greased and lubed. I think the motor is just having some issues. It was sitting in a storage barn for close to 30 years. So, long story short, this is the beginning of a great friendship. And hopefully it'll be around with me. Hopefully I'll be around for a really long time and I'll be able to share these wonderful things with you. So, I'm going to get this buttoned up and an install of the operating system on it. And then we'll come back for a final. That sucks. After all that work. After all that work, the power supply pooped out. <laughs> if I let it sit off for a minute or two, I can get it to boot. If it hangs on. Nope, she's blinking. Repeatedly doing this blinking crap. And the screen freaks out. So stay tuned for that in a future episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you. And as always, I hope you learned something.